Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I will give you an example and show you how Spark ML is working and how efficient the Spark ML is in handling um, highly complicated machine learning models or transforming things or handling large amount of data set efficiently. So um, the example which I'm showing today is not that complicated in, the, in terms of the model which I'm using but the workflow for that is the same thing. So even if you are using, um, even if you are making a complicated model or even if you are making a simple model, the workflow which you need to flow, follow in uh, Spark ML will be the same thing. So just understand the workflow and create your own models. So first of all, what we need to do is this, uh, the, the basic stuff, installing the Spark and calling the requirement libraries and then the main thing starts. So we need to define a Spark section. Over here, I'm building a Spark section uh, and calling it Airflow Noise Prediction. This this act like a, you know, if you if you have used um, any kind of web scraping tool, or uh, like over there also we use this, this section. So we call a section. So the same process we do for Spark also. So after we, uh, create a section we need to install the um, data and after installing the data we just reading the data and we are putting that to a df okay and we are just showing the um, the first five rows of that df then after doing that we are doing a small um, cleaning process uh, like dropping the duplicates um, dropping the na values and null values in it and etc etc so after we clean the entire thing we are uh, we we uh, cleaning means we are transforming it like we clean it we transform we change column names etc after we change the column names we actually save it as a packlet file so which can be used in future after like that will be like a the elt the um last step of ELT as extra transform and load process. Like um, normally, you know, I think I have explained this in some of my previous videos, like we extract things, transform and load it to a database. So that entire things comes under that section. Then after we save that packet file, we will be reading that packet file. And yeah, when, when we are dealing Spark, we need to create, there will be three stages yeah, three stages. First, we are making a vector uh, of uh, our data. So we are making a vector of a vector in sense like we are defining our input columns. For example, over here, I'm in uh, my input columns are frequency, angle of attack, code length, etc. See, these things act like input columns, and we are defining the output columns as well. Over here, it's features. So then we make uh, we make a like a the second state is a standard scalar. It's a uh, uh, it'll add, uh, in the pipeline. These these uh, the what I meant is the workflow will be same, right? So workflow. These are the workflow. Uh, three stages are the workflow. So when we after making a vector, we make a standard scalar, and the standard scalar that is actually showing uh, what is input columns and output columns. Then we define the models that is the third stage. This is what the, mo the model which I'm using over here is a linear regression. That's what I meant, it's not a mo more complicated thing. Uh, then after we create this model, we this three stages are over. And these three stages will be there everywhere. If you are making a complicated model, it will be there. If you are making a simple model, it will be also there. So after this, we make a pip pipeline. This is the main machine learning pipeline. So this pipeline is consisting of these three mandatory stages. And then after creating this pipeline, we, uh, we are not using this pipeline now. We are now splitting the data into training data and testing data. Then after we split, we use this pipeline to uh, use this pipeline to call. We use the pipeline, then fit the training data. After fitting the training data, we evaluate the pipeline um, using mean square error and other things and I mean absolute error all the means uh, mean square and um, like all the things we need we evaluate after we evaluate 
um, we actually save the model so that we can use in future then we use the uh, the saved model to predict uh, you with the testing data so after everything is done we just stop the spark so this is just a small example code and um, the way the spark is working out so i hope you got you guys enjoyed it so until until next video goodbye